Okay, so here is peak to, or peak to. Not exactly sure how it's pronounced, but it is really interesting because it allows me to add in basically catalogs and databases from Apple Photos, Lightroom uh, Classic, Lightroom, so this is CC Mobile, from a folder, if I still had Aperture, right? I mean, that's a long time ago. Uh, DxO, if you use that, on one photo raw, Pixelmator, Luminar, Capture One, iView Media, I don't use that, even Instagram, right? So you can basically choose anything from here. So what it does is it basically catalogs <laughs> every single photo in all of those different databases. You can see that I've connected Pixelmator. I have connected um, my Lightroom Cloud. I have connected my Lightroom Classic Catalog, and this is version 13. This is the latest version of Lightroom as of today. And I have connected my Apple Photos and my Instagram. So I can literally pull up my Instagram on the spot, click on a photo, get the information about it. So I can see where it was. I could see a version information, XF information, IPTC information, and even its own AI analysis on saturation and brightness. If there's people, if there's any keywords, the color palette, all these different things, you can get all this information just by clicking on it. <laughs> Look, you can see this. It's so interesting. Now, if I go to all sources, you can see here, I've got some old photos in here. This is from my Lightroom catalog, very old portrait session. So these are all unedited, of course, because that's not being viewed in Lightroom. But you can see here, this is actually from a Kodak DCS 14 uh, Pro 14N. This is a very old camera. And this was actually shot in 2004, all right? I can pull up all the information. It's AI analysis on it gives me a global score, aesthetic score, all these different things, right? But I can search for the word cat from this. And it's going to find every photo <laughs> that has the resemblance of a cat in it. And you can see it's doing that right here. So it's really cool AI analysis in the way of being able to look at all of my photos and just find something I need. Smile, eyes open, and I can dial in by, by Lightroom catalog, I can dial in by anything I want and it'll just pull it up in as fast as you just saw it. Tolerance, standard tolerance, I can make it really strict for finding the cat. I can, it's conversational too, so I can say black cat, right? And now it's going to search for black cats. And you can see it's, it did, oh, it does have a black cat in the photo, you can see it's right here. It obviously got this wrong. I'm not sure what's going on there. It was a fun thing that we, I guess we were experimenting with. So look, it got, here's Blondie, it got that wrong. There's no black cat in the picture, but otherwise, oh look, cat ears. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty intelligent that it figured that out. That is not a black cat. Oh, there, it, maybe it is back here though, I don't know. Um, so you get the idea. This is what uh, peak toe can do. It can, or peak toe, I'm not exact, I'm sure assuming it's peak toe, um, but you can connect all these different things and browse your, look at this, Instagram only. You can browse um, your photos, right? You can browse your photos in multiple places at once using its, its intelligent indexing. Now I will say that the one downside to this is that Picto does use a SQL database just like what Lightroom does, just like what Capture One does and so on, uh, but it is quite large. 1.34 gigabytes, that is of course, connecting my large multi-gigabyte, large 300,000 plus Lightroom catalog, plus my Apple photos, plus my Instagram. I did not add, and Lightroom Cloud, I did not add Capture One into this, but all of that, it brought it just under two gigabytes of a database. So it does take up a decent amount of space to do its cataloging. I am assuming that it's referencing preview files in here, so, there's gonna be somewhere in this folder is gonna be preview files. See, JPEG. So it's it's pulling up preview files to cat to catalog everything. So here's cloud, Lightroom, here's cloud, Instagram, Pixelmator would be here, thumbnails. Let's see. Thumbnails, where would this be from? Okay, so this is from Lightroom. So it's also pulling up um nope, this is probably Apple Photos. This is my guess. Thumbnails is probably Apple Photos. I don't know where, maybe it just pulls the, the, the preview files from for Lightroom catalog and maybe it pulls the preview file from the Lightroom catalog file itself. So, 
But yeah, uh, you can create albums. So you can do dynamic albums, black and white photos, photos of diving, stuff like that, and just pull that up in an instant. So it's a way, basically, it's like having the ability to do intelligent searching from a Lightroom classic catalog, but outside of Lightroom using their software. So that's Peak2. Really cool software. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this in my day-to-day -day workflow, but it's a nice-to-have type of feature. The bread and butter of what this company makes is Avalanche. With Avalanche, it allows me the ability to easily, easily convert a Lightroom catalog or any other of what everything you saw on Peak2, Apple Photos or, or Aperture, things like that, convert it to Capture One or vice versa, convert Capture One to Lightroom, things like that. If you are still using Apple Aperture, which is a very long time ago, of course, and now it, it, it hasn't been supported by Apple in such a long time, but if you are using it, you wanna convert it to Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, a modern today Lightroom Classic or to Lightroom Cloud, you can do that. If you wanna convert to Capture One, you can do that. Um, me, I want to convert because I would like to start using Capture One more. So I wanted to convert Lightroom Classic Photos, a catalog into Capture One and create a style in Capture One so that I can easily, which is like a style is like a Lightroom preset. So I can easily just click a button and now I've got this look to my photos in Capture One. So what I've done is I've converted my, some of my Lightroom catalogs to Capture One. These are specific looks so on this hard drive that I call Kenobi, uh, you can see here I have um, I have different folders that are um, Capture One or labeled Capture One or LRC, which is Lightroom Classic. So I have love. Uh, so let's see. I'll look at um, buh, 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 buh. look at hypersensitive panchromatic. This is um, a Lightroom catalog of a black and white editing style of mine, and I'm going to pull it up the converted to Capture One, so you can see how that looks inside of Capture One. And I'll even do a quick side-by-side -side to the Lightroom version so you can see the differences. Okay, so Avalanche is not 100% perfect. I, I wouldn't expect it to because this is a very tricky thing to convert from Lightroom to Capture One. In fact, that's why if you try to convert a Lightroom classic catalog to a Capture One catalog in Capture One, quite often it fails because it, there's always something that will get wrong, or usually. Avalanche has been doing a really good job for me as I've been doing a lot of conversions, but you can see here, this one actually failed. My black and white profile conversion actually failed. None of the, none of the original files are being referenced, so I have to look into why. I'm going to try a different one in the meantime. So here is one where I started the process. This is a, 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 a style called Velvet Media. I'm going to switch to that. And let's see how this one works. Okay. So you can see that this one actually converted well, and some of the previews are still loading, but otherwise you can see this is a very, this is one of my example uh, editing styles because it's very punchy, high contrast, high saturation, um, very punchy editing style. But I want to compare it to the same photos in Lightroom. Okay, so you can see the photos side by side. I wish I could make this a little bigger bit. Let's see, can I? No, it's going to stay in that little grid. Okay. So, but you can see here, the photos look basically identical. Again, this is not my, the editing style that I use on a regular basis. This is more just an example. This is my demoing editing style. It's called Velvet Media. Um, but the nice thing is, if you look, if I go photo by photo, so if I go to the next photo in Capture One, the next photo in Lightroom, they look identical. However, you'll notice that the exposure, the contrast, those are not equal. So things that are in Lightroom do not match up perfectly to Capture One, but at the end of the day, the way that Avalanche achieved the conversion makes it match. And I'm okay with that. It, Avalanche, I had, the way I had it set was to use their AI machine learning process to further enhance that, that conversion. And you can see that the blue here in the, in the wall is different than the blue here he, in the wall. And his shirt is not as vibrant as his shirt in Lightroom. I'm okay with that because it's really, really close otherwise. Let's go to a photo in a different scene so you can see the difference. So here's one that's super punchy. Let's go back to here and let's go to here. So look at the difference here. Again, punchier, more, more saturation here, less saturation here, but I actually like the Capture One version even better than the Lightroom version. So it did a really good job there. So 
That is what Avalanche does. It allows you to take a Lightroom Classic catalog or some other software, convert it into a Capture One catalog. And now I can literally go in and I could save this editing style as a Capture One style. And now then I can just apply that style like in Lightroom preset, I can apply that style easily in Capture One to any other photos. So I am slowly converting my presets from Lightroom to Capture One using this method. And it's working really well so far. Again, you saw that with my black and white one, there was a weird bug, it didn't work. And I have to rerun it again, not a big deal. It's automated. I just pull it back up and rerun it. And hopefully the second time it works better than the first time. So yeah, this software is really impressive. If you are looking to convert at the end of the day, give it a try. It's very affordable. You can even pay once <laughs> and basically have it. So it's quite affordable, easy for you to convert from one software to another, whichever direction you're going to. You can buy the bundle with Avalanche and Peak2. If you're interested in using Peak2, consider doing that as well. Definitely worth checking out. Definitely worth the effort um, to convert if you are thinking about it, going through Avalanche to do it will save you so much from the man hours of, of, the, of this process. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, you know, overview and comparison of what Avalanche can do for you.